Now we have three minutes. You're here, you're from Madurai, the finance minister from Madurai in the center. We can't let you go without your comments on what you thought of the budget and whether we will really grow between 6 to 6.8 or 6.4. How, how do you, I mean, there is a perception that you completely diametrically differ from the, the way the government in Delhi thinks about development, growth, economic uh, progress. And you. So, one way to express this, how you diametrically differ from the government or don't differ is to sort of give us an analysis, a quick three-minute analysis of the union budget. Look, I, I have been loath to go on TV, um, both for personal relationships with a lot of the senior officials, the finance minister, the finance secretary, all good uh, personal friends of mine. Uh, and, you know, it's a difficult job. I would say as long as somebody says what they do and does what they say, then the people get to decide. I have a completely different model. I want to focus on human development, quality of life, equality, keeping the stratification of society low. And I know that that will attract the right level of investment and talent and give me the right outcome. That's my view of the world. It's been validated to some extent over 100 years of the development of time model. The Gujarat view of the world, which is now the Indian government's view of the world, you must have seen the Economist article, the Gujaratification of India after the Gujarat poll, is that you actually get national champions or state champions, you give them a lot of money, they build a lot of factories and then you'll get trickled down to the people and all that stuff and therefore you'll see political, I mean you'll see poverty alleviation and you'll see better outcomes in education. All that. In fact, that has not proven to be true. Gujarat and Tamil Nadu have roughly the same per capita income, as the economist pointed out, but their poverty rate is four times higher than ours, and only 50% of the girls in, uh, at 18 have gone through high school. Right? So we have completely different society. It's okay. As long as I say these are my values, I act according to these values, and I get the right outcome, the people can decide if that's what they want or not. What worries me a lot about the union government is that they say they're for the poor. They say that they're putting more schemes. They say that they're sending money into the you know, benefits of the poor. But in fact, the, the, the numbers don't reflect that. And whatever execution problem I have, they have a much bigger execution problem because they have a much bigger execution ambition. So broadly, I would say the twist away from progressive taxation and progressive spending, more to the poor, more from the rich, is antithetical to my approach of how I would frame my budget. And when my budget comes out, at least there'll be a comparison to say, what is the difference in kind of the priorities of this, right? But at the end of the day, what does it matter, my philosophy, your philosophy, a budget is a statement of intent. Only when the final account comes out a year and a half later, you'll know what was actually achieved. The numbers vary so much between, at least for me, I try to keep it down. But in the union government, the numbers can vary by one lakh or two lakh crores between the budget and the final account. So let's wait for the outcome. The outcome will tell us, you know, which approach was right or wrong and what did it achieve and did it achieve what you said you wanted to achieve. These are all the benchmarks that we should all be held accountable to and then we'll know, you know, who's doing what job. No, your arguments are always reasonable. You have a sound rationale to all your arguments. Today I found there's a bit of diplomaties laced in your comments. So that is a new <laughs> addition to uh, uh, maybe the, I'm finally growing up. I, I <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's push you a little more. L push you, you a little time. more. Yeah. <laughs> push you a little more. Yeah. What's the one thing that they did you wouldn't do, and what's the one thing that they didn't do that you would have done? I would have tried to make the taxation regime more progressive. Right now, too much of the tax revenue comes from the poor and middle class, and too little of it comes from the rich. And I don't have that power as a state minister because we don't have any of the progressive taxation tools constitutionally, they're only over there. Agriculture? No, but yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I can have a tax independent of the union, yeah. but let's, yeah. Um, the thing that they do a lot that I wouldn't do is that this centrally sponsored scheme stuff and you know at first it only used to be people like me who you consider kind of uh, what did you say uh, the dissent dissent <laughs> now the dissent seems to have spread because when i was in the uh, finance minister's meeting with the honorable union finance minister in delhi in november state after state with the bjp 
pure bjp or bjp coalition government ask the questions that i always used to ask i say why do you take so much in cesses and surcharges why don't you put it into the divisible pool and give it to us why do you call it centrally sponsored scheme and then intrude into state subjects that you're not supposed to be in why do you call it pm abc but you put only 20% of the money and we put 80% of the money and you still call it pm abc these questions which only people like i uh, you know dmk and south used to ask northern and bjp and western states are asking these questions now so i think this is a healthy sign in a democracy because we can't all be rebellious and dissenters by nature right i mean uh, the virus is spreading yeah, i don't know about <laughs> that or logic logic or or uh, patriotism for the citizens of our state relative to being uh, respectful to the leader